Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, everyone. We are so excited to have you here with us this morning. Welcome to our AMA BD Health and Wellness Fair virtually. Normally, we would be outside and the front of the hospital would be buzzing as we come together, but we are now in 2020, a time when we have to be able to be isolated and social, I shouldn't say isolated, but socially distanced. And therefore, we want to make sure that we take time to make sure that we are healthy together. And that is why there's no way that we would not have the opportunity to come together to celebrate health and wellness. I do say celebrate health and wellness, because during this time of pandemic season, we have to make sure that we are well. So once again, we say welcome to our virtual Amabiti Health and Wellness Fair. We want to know how you're doing. And so we're going to ask you to please engage with us and be able to talk with us, if you will. We have an opportunity to put questions into or your comments into your question box. There should be a question box that you're able to speak with us. And so, first of all, I want to know, how are you doing this morning? Come on, put it in there. Give us a word or two to let us know how you are doing this morning. Uh, we, uh, yeah, some people are coming through and letting us know how you're doing. I believe I see that somebody says they are excited. There's even somebody who says that they are tired. But we hope that your time together with us will be invigorating for you during this time of us together. We want to be able to thank you so much as we come together. And there's so many who are with us today and will be sharing time together. And so we want to be able to thank you so much as we come together. We want to get started with a special message from our president and CEO, Mr. Daryl K. Terry Sr., as he lets us know why we are here and we come to honor every year the legacy of Ama Bidi. Welcome to our first virtual Alma Beatty Health and Wellness Fair. I am Daryl Terry, President and CEO of Newark Beth Israel Medical Center and Children's Hospital of New Jersey. Thank you all for taking time out of your day to get healthy with us. Before we begin, I want to remember the woman who started this event and continues to inspire us all, Ms. Alma Beatty. Alma was a champion and tireless advocate for our patients and our community. She joined the Beth in 1967 and dedicated her career to opening doors for our patients, our community members, and our hospital leaders. In fact, I stand on her shoulders here today. She created our hospital's first patient advocacy department. She brought summer youth employment to the Beth. She initiated one of our first senior wellness programs, our Adopt-A-Family Holiday Initiative, and launched Newark Beth Israel Medical Center's first Black History Month celebration. In 2012, we renamed today's event the Alma Beatty Health and Wellness Fair in her honor, and in 2015, Osborne Terrace between Lehigh and Lyons was officially renamed Alma Beatty Way. Today, we continue to deliver world-class care to our patients and community. Newsweek named us one of the world's best hospitals and best maternity hospitals in the country. We are a national leader in patient safety and quality with top-ranked heart and heart transplant programs, and New Jersey's only lung transplant center, and the best is yet to come. This October, we are planning the largest expansion of our hospital since Alma Beatty first began here more than 40 years ago. With a greatly expanded emergency department and a brand new glass enclosed lobby that will move our front door back onto Lyons Avenue and bring us that much closer to the community we serve, Alma would certainly be proud. Alma Beatty left an indelible mark on our hearts, our community, and the Beth. Her light continues to shine on us today and inspires all of the activities, education, and fun that you are going to have during this health fair. Thank you all and enjoy.
Thank you, Mr. Terry. We are really so excited to have this virtual time together. As we did say in the beginning, we hope that you'll be energized. And one way that we're getting ready to do that is that we have our trainer with us. Yes, a trainer, a time to exercise. So even though we are in our homes, we want you to make yourself comfortable or maybe not too comfortable and get ready to exercise with us. Today we have our health coach, Ms. Lisa Charles. She's a trainer and CEO of Wellness Consultancy. She is also, um, Lisa is a re research coordinator for the Rutgers University Brain Health Alliance. It is so good to have, I'm calling her Lisa, Ms. Charles with us this morning. Truly, it's truly my time to exercise as well, because you, Lisa, you have been trying to get me to exercise for a while. I know, but now you got me. I am here. I am a captive audience with the rest of those who are with us. And to be an example on this morning, I'm going to roll up my sleeves. That's right. I'm going to roll up my sleeves. Just like <laughs> and try to be the best I can as we get some exercise in here this morning. It's truly great to have you. So come on and let us get started on a way to be healthy. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Marilyn. And I love the word you said earlier. This is a celebration. It's a celebration of Ama Betty who lived such an amazing life. But I think one of the things she wanted to give to everyone is a celebration of you individually everybody i feel like i can see you i'm in your living room i want to show you what you can do at home to celebrate your worthiness i need 10 minutes 10 minutes of a commitment daily can really take you down a positive way and method to a better health paint some for yourself so I'm right ready. now we're just going to get up i'm going to tell you a couple of things because I'm, I'm seeing my mind i see everybody up I know some people that are out there. Okay, so I'm imagining, I see Helen, you're out there. You're gonna do what I call PP, perfect posture. Gonna roll those shoulders down and back and really let those muscles along the shoulder blades hold and lift. The chest is now lifted. I call it the posture of kings and queens. I just made you two inches taller. And when I lift the spine, I turn back the hands of time. So we're gonna keep this posture during a warm up. And you might say, where's the music? I say the music is all in our hearts. So I'm gonna show you some things. We're gonna have that perfect posture. We're gonna also breathe, because I need you to breathe all the time. You know, 80% of the people breathe very shallowly. I don't want this to be for our tribe. So you're gonna breathe in your nose, out your mouth, in your nose, out your mouth. I call this the DDB breathing, that deep, diaphragmatic breathing. One more breath, see if you can fill your fingertips full of the air and out your mouth. So we're gonna keep that going as we move. And listen, if you didn't feel it all the way down low, here's my tip. When you're laying down, you really breathe just like you did when you were a baby. And so you'll feel that rise and fall of the abdomen. That's something you can work on, yes? So here we are, we're just twisting. I wanna warm up the upper torso. So we're doing a little bit of twisting. And you look, I'm not even moving that far, so I don't know what's going on. I call it what is the juice in your joints or the issues in your tissue. So I need you to work in your own zone. But if you can, you're just slowly going to twist a little bit more. Do you see my foot actually lifts off the ground? So I don't want to do anything to hurt my knee trying to twist and trying to keep my knee in an uncomfortable position. So here we go. We're twisting. This is a nice way to warm up. Like I said, I hear music. Here, how we take it up is we reach, reach, right? So now we did rotation, reach. If you reach higher, you'll feel it in a different part. But Coach Lisa, I feel this in my back too. Uh, yeah, we want to warm up the back. We want to warm up the core. And if we go a little lower, we want to warm up the legs as well, right? So here we are, we're gonna stay right here. Look at this twist. We're gonna stay lifting one knee up. If you needed to hold on to something, you could definitely do that. Just gonna do it for a couple more times. And the other side, if you do on one side, you wanna do on the other, right? Beautiful. Now we're warming the legs up a little bit. So if I wanna take the heart rate up, all I have to do is move. So I'm gonna move and twist, move and twist. I can see you up. If you're not up yet, get up. It's not too late. 
Can you give me a little arm across? And another arm across. And an arm up. And an arm up. And watch this twist with a knee. Uh-oh. Twist with a knee. Uh-oh. Twist with a knee. One more. Twist with a knee. You want to take your heart rate up a little bit more? We walk forward. Reach hands over the head. Hands over the head. Hands over the head. Hands over the head. And this is a modified jumping jack. We're just going to do it for four. And one more. <laughs> and if you can, that's awesome too. But if you can't, stay right here, right? So we really kind of just ran through some of the things to warm the body up and just get it started, get it revved up. What I want to do is just run through those right together and feel what that feels like for a warm up, right? So if we did one, two, three, four, and reach, and reach, and reach, and reach, and one, two, and one, two, take it to the side, reach, side, reach. This is so great. See how I go a little lower? Now I'm gonna take it forward and up and up one more time. Say yes, <laughs> say yes. Beautiful, so this is your commitment. You put on a piece of music and you see, I started stationary first just to warm the body up. I didn't do any drastic movements. And then I work my body into it slowly. I like a move side to side, move forward. But you know, that's a little warm up. What I got for you here. This is a chair. Yes, Lisa, it's a chair. We see it's a chair, but look what you can do with a chair. Look, this could be a chair, this could be your couch, this could be a countertop, it really doesn't matter. But we're gonna just lightly have one hand on the side. We're gonna take one foot to the back and we're just gonna lift it up, lift and back and lift. Now here, every time you lift, blow the air out. Bring that navel to the spine. Nice, one more. Beautiful, take it down low. What? Remember the issues in the tissues, juice in the joints, know your body, don't go too low. But this is gonna be my other little find. You remember I had like the posture, which you're always keeping, posture's king and queen, breathing. Now we're gonna feel, we're gonna play feel. I want you to feel the muscle. And when you find it, I want you to focus on it. And then when you focus on it, you start to have fun in the movement. See, I got a big old smile on my face, but I know you feel a little something. We're gonna come up. <laughs> and now, this is my favorite thing. Just gonna balance on one foot. This, here's my tip. I need you to do this periodically during the day. You could brush your teeth. You could boil some water in the kitchen. This is one of those things that a lot of times I'll ask my clients, you ever do single leg exercises? And they say, no. I say, do you walk? Do you go upstairs? You do it all the time. So we really wanna work on balance and we don't wanna be going all over the place. We wanna to try to center our hips and really lift and hold. So we keep it going. <laughs> Here's a great thing for the chair. All right, so you're in a bad mood. You think, you say, well, what do I do to just get myself feeling better? So I've warmed up a little bit and now I'm doing what I call the yes. You just reach the ceiling, yes, and draw those elbows to the back and squeeze those back muscles, yes. And squeeze those leg muscles as you come up, yes. And come on the tippy toes, yes. Like a prima ballerina or a primo ballet dancer, yes. And hold if you can or not, hold it right here. And beautiful. You remember my rule, what we do on one side, we must do on the other. So we took the foot back and we just brought it up on a shh. Draw that air out. Beautiful. And you know what, you might find, wow, I'm sweating and I didn't even do anything yet. That's the beauty of slowing things down. One more. Now let's take it to the back and let's just see how low, right? So if you're good here and the joints don't bother you and you just feel it in the muscles and they're singing to you like a fine opera or whatever kind of music you like, it's just a cell saying, thank you for working me out. I love you. <laughs> Stay down here for four, three, two, one. We're gonna come up, take that leg. We gotta balance. You might find that balance was easier on one side than the other, but it's so amazing when you balance, you get that PP, the perfect posture, you get that DDB, that deep diaphragmatic breathing. I don't know why I said it like that, but anyway. <laughs> and just hold it for three, 
two, one. That's super awesome. That's something that you can do on any countertop, chair, or even tapping a wall. And you can do it every time you enter a certain room or when there's a commercial on, you know, keeping it going. So one of my favorite things, because you see you're in my gym, and yes, I have a bunch of things, but here's the scoop. You don't need anything. You just need your willingness to improve your health outcome. You just need your willingness to grow in your wellness journey. That's it. And here I have water bottles. But I'm going to show you a little weight routine with water bottles, which is really cool, right? So here we are. We're going to squeeze the front part of our muscles in the front side. And I normally would ask my class, what muscle is that? But you all know that's the biceps. When you breathe out, that's when you're squeezing the muscle, right? So breathing in, out, in, out. You know what else I like to do? Is say yes, and yes. Try it out, I'm telling you, it's gonna give you more energy. Yes, one more here. Lock the arms at the side, elbows at the side, and do the same action. Now you're gonna feel it in a whole different part of your bicep. Give me a couple more, yes, and yes. One more, now. Take your elbows, keep them by your side, and we're gonna straighten this the lowest part of the arm. And we're just gonna really work the back of our arms. See, I'm bringing it up, elbows stay stationary, and I'm hinged at the hips a little forward. And here we go for four, and three, and and yes. And one more, and hold and squeeze everything, gorgeous. Right, so I'm just gonna take my arms, and now I'm just gonna work pushing because we said we we're going to do a little pushing we're pushing upward working our shoulders and bringing it down pulling it down and actually squeezing those muscles along our back so push up and squeeze along our back and push up and squeeze along our back and watch this bonus this is my favorite thing posture up shoulders down i don't want any shoulders worn as earrings they're down and back stomach is nice and tight we are breathing, and now we're going to pour the water. <laughs> pour the water. This works so many small muscle groups. All in the shoulder area, a little bit of the back area. It hits a couple of chest muscles. And here we are right here for our final two exercises on the water weight training. We're going to pull it in and squeeze those back muscles. Take a little sniff and push it out like someone's pushing against you. It's hard. And pull it in and push it out. And can you give me one more? Pull it in and push it out. Isn't that fabulous? Look, it's a water bottle and you can work your muscles so wonderfully. It's incredible. So last thing that I want to do is the challenge, right? So here we are in the chair and I know you all are seated. <laughs> Some have been seated the whole time, but that's okay. You guys sit at the edge of your chair. You're going to come with me now, right? We're going to think about that person's posture. We're going to think about that DDB. We're going to breathe in, and we're going to stand up. You could have done it with the water bottles, but I'm going to do it without. Here we go. We're going to stand up and squeeze every muscle as you come up. And can you come back down? Oh, and stand up. And come back down. You want me to walk and stand up? And come back down. One more. And stand up. And come halfway down. This is my little bonus. Hips go side to side, and you're really like cleaning the chair. It's like a dust. You're dusting the chair, and now you're gonna feel it in so many different of your leg muscles, sort of your interior um, quads. You're gonna feel it really going side to side, and you're gonna also feel it in a piece of your glutes or your your backside. <laughs> Just holding that there, and come all the way up. And that can easy thing as it can be. I mean, you don't have to make this so complicated. And as I said, you don't have to even go anywhere. You see how little of a space I've worked in. And I want you to think about, don't use anything as an excuse not to improve, not just your body, but did you know when you exercise that 10 minutes, I can help improve your cognition. I can help and get you sharp, as my mom used to say, sharp as a tack. You know, we can definitely improve your energy source and it just makes you healthier all the way in. So that's what I really wanted. That's the message I have for you. And just hold your arms out. I gave you a present. Down on the ground, there is a dozen roses. I just need you to pick them up with a breath. Go on down in your house, yes. I have given you a dozen roses. 
and we're just ending just like this, just remembering those key components of posture and breath and engagement between the brain and the body. You do that 10 minutes a day, I promise you, you're going to see some dividends pay off over time. 10 (laughs) minutes. Lisa, I can do that. You got me. I got my water and I've been doing my exercise. I know I have people who are watching with me that will hold me accountable. So I thank you for giving me 10 minutes to be able to exercise. I'm going to now roll down my sleeves, but I know I can do it. I can do it. Thank you for showing us that right in our homes that we're able to take care of ourselves just 10 minutes. For those who are on with us, we do want to let them know that you'll be doing our virtual fitness here at Newark Beth Israel Medical Center and Children's Hospital, New Jersey, starting in October on Fridays. And they'll be able to get that information through our website and our Facebook page. But uh, starting at 12 noon on Fridays in October, you'll be helping us. Be healthy. I got Thank it. Thank you so much, Thank Marilyn. You, and I just want to let everyone know because I'm, I love this hospital, and I'm I'm such a partner with you all. And anything I do, I'm a coach to all. So anyone that has a question about anything I do, they can just reach out to me too. I will explain and I will outline whatever to take them to another level in their health. Thank you so very much. And we want to remind and let everybody know, I should say, that you will, we will be making sure that you get all of this information. Even if you check your chat box or your question box now, you will find information on how to contact Lisa Charles directly. As I did say, that she will be part of our virtual uh, fitness center here at Newark Beth Israel Medical Center in Children's Hospital, New Jersey, starting in October and you'll be able to contact her directly or join in. And as she said, it's only going to take 10 minutes a day to be able to keep healthy. And so now I am accountable. (laughs) Thank you so much. For we know that exercise does help us de-stress. And we really need that during this season and time. We need to especially do that because we understand that um, we have our children who will be going back to school, some of them even virtually. So this morning, it is my pleasure to be able to have our educator with us, Gwendolyn Bynum. She has spent more than 20 years as an educator, and she's coming on this morning to help us learn how to, to be able to work with our children as they're going back to the school, especially those who are doing it virtually. And so we're so happy to have you with us this morning. Gwendolyn, thank you so much for being with us. We are so delighted. And we want to just take a moment or two, a few moments to be able to speak to each other and talk with each other about how to be able to handle this time and to be able to make sure that children as well as parents will be able to be healthy. Yes, I'm going to even say healthy because it sometimes is so stressful going back to school normally. But now we have the challenge of possibly some going in some days, some being virtual. And we're just going to be able to ask if you would help us discuss this, especially for our parents so that we will be able to make it through this time. So once again, thank you so much for joining with us. And let us begin. Truly, this. thank you. Um, This is a time, as I have stated, that many of the children will be learning remotely. We call it virtual learning. It can be a stressful time for parents as well as children. Would you give us some helpful tips tips on how we can be able to navigate this new season. Absolutely. First of all, I would like to say welcome back to all the students and all the teachers, especially those who are operating in a virtual environment. Uh, The one tip that I will give is that although we're virtual and we're at our home, we have to make the optimal learning environment. So it's important as parents that we create a space for our kids to get the best out of the educational opportunities that they're gonna be presented with. And I would say, create your space so that your child is comfortable. 
so that your child can have access to all of the materials that he or she may need. And in creating this space, it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot of money. You can just create yourself, a, maybe put a shower curtain up and mm -hmm. create that background. Create that background so that your child is focused and the distractions are behind them. So, yes, that's really interesting that you're saying that very, especially about distractions, because especially when learning remotely, the child is now at home, but now yet at school. Can you help us, tell us how we're able to help a child transition from one environment to the next to aid in their learning? As I said, while you are at home, we do have to remember that it's still a school setting. So it's extremely important that as a parent, you make sure that your child understands that we're in a school setting. So you try to keep a schedule, you try to keep a routine. And I would say, keep the routine that they had in their regular environment, okay. keep that routine. So if it means waking them up in the morning at the very same time that you would have normally wake, woke, woken them up, um, have them get dressed as if they were actually going to school, have everything that they would need. So if I pack the book bag for my child when they go to school on a regular, let me pack a book bag for my child as if they were going to school. And I place those things right next to my child where they're learning so that they have all of their materials right there next to them and that they feel as though they're in a school setting. We may not have desks or anything, but let's get a set up a table or something that they can sit at so that they're they're comfortable and their environment mimics their school environment as much as possible. So we're really trying to get them to have a routine because yes. we do know that we may not be virtual forever, yes. that they will have to go back into the building, as we say, and yes. to be able to share. Should I turn my camera on if I'm a parent? Well, while it's, it's, it's your off. choice, while it's your choice, we as parent, as teachers, we'd like to be able to see the students because just like in classroom, we can decipher whether a child is understanding something, whether information is being heard just by their body language, just by their facial expressions. Um, this is why we talk about making sure the space is at the optimal learning and you ultimately control what's seen in your house. So if you create that small area where your child is in that area, no one will see anything except for what you allowed them to see. So the camera thing really helps the teacher kind of understand, especially when she may ask your child to share something or if your child doesn't get something, she can read that through body language and facial expressions. That's really important because education really in teaching or interaction is yes. the total experience, looking at us, seeing how we're able to understand uh, what right. our facial expressions may be like. Right. You know, often in a household, there's more than one child. Yes. And now I'm the parent. How do I help when I have more than one child when it comes to virtual learning at home? That's a good I'm question. One person. What do I do? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, and that happens all too often. What I suggest, if you have more than one child in the home that's experiencing virtual learning at that time, you need to make sure that they are either, if you have space and you can separate them to different mm -hmm. rooms, then that would be the greatest experience. However, if you don't have space where you can put them in multiple rooms, get headphones. Get headphones so those headphones block out the distractions of what's going on on one child's computer and what's going on in the other child's computer. And then they all are able to learn within the environment that's suitable for them. And they, they can all hear the instructors that are instructing them at that moment. So it's, it's, it's just important that you space them out and that okay. if you don't have that space, you get some headphones so that they're not distracted by their siblings. Ms. Biden, I was going to ask this question because often when it comes to going to school or bringing your children to school, it's almost parents have to go back to school themselves. Yes. And so you can help a parents during this time of virtual learning. Are there some things that we as parents need to know that we may not have done before? Or how do we help our children, especially with homework? Absolutely. So if you are, if you're at home with your child during the virtual experience, I think it's extremely important that you follow your child's learning path, 
that you follow whatever it is your your teacher has given your child. That means that if your child is doing Google Classroom, um, if your child is doing workshop worksheets, please make sure that you're doing those things with them and that you're on those computer um, on those computer things so that you can know what your child is doing, what your child is experiencing. Um, I think it's important that you, as well as your child, follow the routine that the teacher had given you. And that way, when your child is doing something, you know what they have to do already. So therefore, you're able to assist them in what they have to do. And also, make sure you utilize the questioning, the chat on those WebExes and things. So if you have questions or you have concerns, you can type in the chat and let the teacher know that you have a question, you have a concern, and just keeping in contact. You know, we have phone communication, keeping in contact with your child's teacher to make sure that you're 100% up on what is being asked of your child and to make sure that your child understands what is being asked of them. So there really is a lot that, you know, the parents are to do to be able to make sure that staying in contact with the children's teacher as well. But for our children and for their well-being, we're in the house a lot, on computers a lot. Do you have any suggestions about activity for our children during this time to help well, them I, be healthy? Yes. What I suggest is that, yes, we are sitting in front of the computer a lot. What I suggest is that you make sure that they're active. Your children are going to follow their classroom routine, so your children are going to have preps and things. Your children are going to have their gym teachers come within the classroom and actually provide the physical education. Your children are going to have their music teacher come in. When those teachers come on, that's your child's outlet. That's your child's opportunity to become physically involved, Some your child's opportunity to become active. So when those moments come, please make sure that your child is participating and active within those environments because it allows them to just continue to become active and not just sit at the computer and, you know, just get comfortable. So during this time, what I'm also hearing you say um, is for parents to have and be engaged with the educator because yes. the educators are also doing this new thing as well. So yes. really it's time to be able to have really good interaction, communication, and possibly before where it may have been challenging at times, I believe that most educators can now be reached via, you know, their um, email. Is that correct? Yes. Most educators can be reached via their email. Most educators during this time have given out their phone numbers. So you have multiple ways. You can reach them via their email. You can reach them via telephone. You can also reach them as your child is on the WebEx or whatever device your child is using through the chat system where you can communicate. And always be, be also mindful that this is new to the educators as well. So okay. while we're in this virtual moment, the educators are also learning the process of how to make sure that they communicate effectively with you and your child. So like you said, this is really a new experience for all of us. And when we go into new experiences, we want to make them fun and exciting yeah. and challenging. So we thank you so much. But before thank we even get on, one more question I might even have. You know, yes. there are some of us parents who do have children with special needs. Do you have any advice for us as well? Um, if you have children with special needs, your district should be accommodating that child. So at the point when they're accommodating that child, you make sure that your child is utilizing those accommodations. We do still have our aides that will be assisting students who have special needs. So when those aides are there to assist your student, just make sure you're utilizing those aides in the capacity in which they are being serviced to do so. I said one more, but that's one more question. That's two. Okay. I was thinking about this. With now that we have cameras that are being utilized and we have students who are on camera, would yes. you give us any protocol about what we should do in terms of that? For example, I think you were talking about making sure we get the child up and right. that we get the child dressed like right. they're going to school. So they really should be doing all of that as well as, you know, those who are in the household as well. Yes. So as I said, yes, that camera thing can be a very tricky thing. Everyone is on camera. So be very mindful that when you're in your home, 
it's not just a child being dressed, it's all the individuals in the house because you may step into the camera and that camera is being seen by every child that's on that TV. So that goes also with being mindful of the things that you say because those things are also being heard on that camera. So as a parent, as I said, you control what's seen in your environment. You control what's heard in your environment. So just be mindful of those things and set up your environment so that it reflects only what you want to be reflected. Okay. This is really exciting time. So thank yes. you so very much thank you for, for having me with us and for sharing with us the things that we need to be able to do during this period of time. So to recap, what I'm hearing is that it's new for all, for yes. the child, for the parent, for the student. And therefore, even though it's new, it's challenging, but it's a great opportunity for all of us. And even us as parents, we have to realize that we're back in school as well. So thank you so much for giving us those tips, how to be able to help our children learn during this time and to be able to keep things healthy and well. And therefore, we understand that we are still in the midst of the COVID-19 time, that the Nobel, the Nobel COVID, the Nobel COVID virus is still here. And therefore, it is extremely important for us to be tested. Yes, there are testing sites throughout the state and in your area. We are now giving you um, the page that you can go to, the online site that you can go to, and we thank you so much. We'll show this to you at the end as well. But we know that not only is it important to get COVID testing, but it is important to be able to protect yourself against the virus by, by social distancing, washing your hands, and by wearing a mask. Yes, a mask is important. And therefore, we have an opportunity. Here is a video that we want to share with you on how to appropriately wear your mask. I'm holding a surgical mask. The surgical mask is to stop the spread of the coronavirus. You want to make sure that um, you have the color side facing outwards. Most of the masks are made this way with a color that faces outward. I'm wearing glasses, so I'm going to show you how to put this on with glasses. You want to feel for the wire that's in the top of the mask, and that goes under the glasses and over the nose. You then want to strap each band over your ear, and make sure that the mask is across your full face. There are alternative ways to make sure that your mask fits securely. So you can take the string and twist it once, put it over the ear, and it makes it a little bit more secure here on both sides. Now you have a tighter fit. And this is if your mask feels a little loose. Another alternative are mask clips. Some are plastic and some are homemade. Here's one that was donated. You take the strap and connect it to the button. It goes around your head and connects on the other side to the button. Some people use this as a form of fashion or more comfort than to have the strap around your ear. So this is just another alternative to wearing the mask. If you do not have a mask or forget your mask at home, here's a simple way also is to take a regular bandana, fold it in a triangle, 
and tie it around your head. Remember, the most important thing is to have your mouth and nose covered. Some people leave it hanging just like this. Others fold it up that it fits more securely like a mask would. Always making sure that your nose and mouth are securely covered. Hand hygiene is most important. Always wash your hands. When soap and water is available, that's the best option. However, always use hand sanitizer in other cases. If you choose to wear gloves, here's the proper way to put them on and take them off. Be sure to never use hand sanitizer on the glove. Hand sanitizer actually breaks down the construction of the glove, making micro holes that you don't even know exist and destroys the barrier. When taking off the gloves, be sure not to touch your skin. Grab one glove turn it inside out while grabbing the other glove turn it inside out so all of the outside of the glove is inside now properly dispose of the gloves and be sure to sanitize your hands again able to do. It's so wonderful to be able to see how to put on your mask. Thank you so much, Atia, and how to use our hand sanitizer. We are coming together as we're able to share. We thank you so much for absolutely showing us what to do. It is a you know wonderful thing to be able to cover ourselves appropriately, make sure we're washing our hands and doing all we can. What a wonderful opportunity to share during this period of time. We are blessed to be able to share. Yes, we always have to make sure we have our mask. I have two of them here with me today. I have a cloth mask and I have the surgical mask that most people were wearing. And so it's so very important. And just as it is important as wearing a mask, it's just as important to get your flu shot. Our own emergency room doctor, Eric Wasserman, chairman of emergency medicine, described the importance of the flu shot. And so we're going to share a video of the flu shot now. As we go into the fall and winter season, uh, we typically see a lot more uh, colds and flu-like illness. Um, those are uh, nasal congestion, sore throat, cough, uh, sometimes fever, chills, body aches, um, and uh, the common cold and the flu uh, can look similarly. So the best way to prevent the flu, in my opinion, is to get your flu shot. Um, this was something probably you should do uh, early fall uh, when flu season is uh, on its way. Um, very good hand uh, hygiene is super important. So hand washing, cleaning surfaces around your home, um, uh, avoiding close contact with uh, symptomatic individuals. Um, the, the flu and the common cold uh, and even coronavirus spread by respiratory droplets. If you're not in the vicinity of infected respiratory droplets, uh, you're not going to uh, be exposed to these uh, you know, viral uh, illnesses.
Yes, the flu shot is so important because the common cold and the flu and COVID have so many similarities. We want you to do everything you can to protect against this illness. You can hear more from Dr. Wasserman about COVID and the flu at northbest.org on our YouTube channel. And now we have with us today three of our expert physicians to discuss what you can do to safeguard your physical and emotional well being during this time. We have with us Dr. Karen Smars, Supervising Psychologist and Program Director of the Family Life Center at the Regional Diagnostic Center Treatment at North Best Digital Medical Center. We also have Dr. John Seacat, Director of the Pediatric Health Center at the Children's Hospital of New Jersey at North Best Digital Medical Center. And joining the two will be our attending physician of internal medicine specialist, Dr. Nelson Aluya. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Great. Yeah. So I wanna get started with a couple of questions and here with you, Dr. Smart. How can we minimize stress and take care of our emotional health during this time? You know, that's a great question. And I think something that's on everybody's mind. There's a couple of things that you can do every day to really help bring your stress levels down. The first thing I'd recommend is really have something to look forward to every day. Do something enjoyable for at least a half an hour, whether that's baking or um, connecting with friends or you know, doing anything that you really enjoy to take good care of yourself. I'd also limit the news coverage to probably no more than about a half an hour to an hour a day. We don't wanna overdose on the news about COVID-19. We wanna be informed, but we don't wanna be overwhelmed. And finally, um, I would definitely say two part kind of thing, get exercise every day. Even if you're just going outside for a 20 minute walk, a bike ride, something like that, and get good sleep. And those things can really improve your mood every day. Yes, exercise is so very important. I think mm -hmm. since the pandemic started, I put, picked up riding my bike again, and I thought I would ride for maybe five miles, two miles, and I'm up to 100 miles a week. It is so relaxing and so stress-free. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Aluya, we know that in addition to emotional health, people need to care for their physical well-being and not delay certain doctor visits. Everyone wants to know, is it safe to see my doctor? What do you well, say? Yes, uh, it is safe to be you know, uh, your doctor at this time, especially uh, now with the COVID uh, pandemic era. Uh, there's no other time for you to come see your doctor. Uh, we're here, uh, the hospital's uh, open, uh, we have taken steps to ensure that uh, uh, you're safe uh, when you come in, uh, right from the door where, you know, temperature will be checked, you know, we'll have the hand sanitizer for you to, to make sure, you know, you get your hands, you know, sanitized. And then, of course, the standard procedures of directing you to where you need to go uh, to make it easy and convenient for you. Um, we are here to answer your questions, take care of all the things that, uh, your chronic medical issues or even acute medical issues that come up. And uh, like I said, the hospitals are open for us to, to take care. Uh, otherwise, for those who are still very you know, concerned and scared about coming to the hospital, we have uh, the online um, visits that you can have uh, through you know, uh, established uh, um, online services that we you know, produce, uh, we, we, we set up, so where we can speak to you in your comfort of your home and address the issues as well. And um, if need be, send your medications to the hospital or to the pharmacy for you to go pick them up. I'm glad you mentioned telehealth. Um, that would seem to have been the way to go during the height of our pandemic crisis. And so we also wanna make sure that people are coming in for those things that can't um, come be seen or done over the telehealth. And right. so, what is the proper way to, it's a question in the uh, question box, what is the proper way to take off your mask or clean your mask? Dr. Aluya, is uh, there a well, proper way? 
Well, um, ideally, uh, the best way, first and foremost, you make sure you wash your hands and make sure your hands are clean. Um, and if you don't have water and soap, which is ideal, uh, if you have a you know a sanitizer uh, where you can you know make sure you sanitize your hands and uh, you know reach back to the thread of you know uh, of the the mask and pull over your face, ensuring that uh, you not touch your face, and then discard you know the mask uh, before you go on to wash your hands as well or use the sanitizer. And then if you have the face uh, uh, what do you call it the, the face cloth, you do the same you know untie from the back and make sure you discard it. Uh, and then wash your hands as well. Right. I have one of the cloth masks in front of me. And what's great about these masks is that they're um, machine washable. And so you can keep them clean. And they also have a pocket here for a filter to go. If you have one of the surgical masks, uh, whenever you come into New York Beth Israel Medical Center and Children's Hospital, right at the screening point, we give these away. There's several locations throughout the city, um, and even in some of the stores that you're going into now, when you forget your mask, they give you a mask. So whenever it gets to be a little um, messy inside or outside, you should discard it and get another one. Thank you so very much for sharing that information. Now, Dr. Seacat, for parents out there who may think they don't need to come in because their child is not sick, what do you say to them? Yeah, so there has been a lot of, I guess, apprehension of, about coming into the hospital, um, especially since we were hit pretty hard with the COVID virus a few months ago. But now is a very different time. Um, and I understand the apprehension, but there's in reality a limited effect, especially amongst children, that people should not be afraid to bring their child in for care. There's probably more of a risk and a danger for missing preventive care in our children. Um, things like delays in diagnosis and uh, not picking up developmental delays in our children. Um, we wanna make sure our babies are gaining weight. There are all sorts of different reasons for um, us to continue to come and seek, especially preventive care, even uh, with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic going on. Uh, it's, it's just a very different time than it was you know, two months ago. Um, and the dangers are much higher not seeking just general care. Great, thank you for sharing that. There's a question in our um, question box about coming to our emergency room. Dr. Aluya, can you answer that question? Is it safe to come to the emergency room or when should I come to the emergency room? Well, um, it is safe uh, to come to the emergency room. Like I said earlier on, the hospitals are open and we're taking steps to ensure that uh, uh, safety is ideal for you. Um, if you have any concerns, uh, any you know health-related issues, uh, of course, I would always ask everybody to get a primary care physician uh, who you can have access to um, 247. Uh, so if you have any, you know, acute medical issues or concerns that need to be addressed, uh, you call them up first and um, and ask if they can help you via telehealth. But then, of course, if they can't and you have it's urgent enough, or if they ask you to come to the ER, um, then you can come to the emergency room. And of course, uh, the ER have steps to ensure uh, that um, you know you're safe and uh, procedures that you know taking. You know, care of where um, for those who have signs and symptoms uh, of concerns for COVID, they are, are kept in a, a, a different area of contact, um, and then the physicians would you know attend to you, and of course uh, I take care of the urgent medical issues that um, that uh, you're coming in with. Uh, again, it is safe uh, to come to the ER. I know people have a lot of apprehensions about uh, ER this days, but you know, delaying anything that uh, urgent, that uh, life-threatening, uh, can be very, uh, you know, uh, a big issues to 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 the, to the you know safety of anybody and even your family as well. So um, please do not hesitate if you have any concerns uh, that need to be addressed urgently. Please do come to the ER. Uh, so I want to thank you all for joining us this morning. This has been so informative. Dr. Smars, I'm going to remember to take care of my emotional health, understand that I don't have to watch the repeat loop of CNN going over and over and over again to take that news fast and 
and think about what to do about my emotional health, what's coming in to my, affect me and add um, stress to me, as well as I'm going to keep exercising on my bike get out there every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Got to get that exercise in. Dr. Aluya, thank you so much for sharing the information about telehealth and talking about how safely it is, uh, all the safety measures that we have here at Newark Beth Israel Medical Center and Children's Hospital for our patients to come in and return um, to make sure that we're doing all the right things. So I will be in to see you. I want to be seen, get screened, and let's stay healthy together, right? So I will be in. <laughs> I will be in to see you. And Dr. Seacat, for us parents out here, you made it very plain and clear that although our children do not present with um, feeling sick or not feeling well today, it's so very important to get in to see our doctor for the preventative care that's needed, the vaccines. We are guarding ourselves against the pandemic, but we have to remember those childhood illnesses that if we're not protected, we're not protecting our children, that, that becomes another problem on top of that. So yes, again, the yep, the kids need their shots. Absolutely. Again, I thank you all so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, Atia. Thank you. And at this time, I want to remind you that the deadline for the census is quickly approaching. The deadline is September 30th. You can still go on to my census. 2020.gov, my 2020 census.gov, I'm sorry, to fill out, fill it out or call 844-4868-2020 to get more information and fill it out. Please, it's so very important that you fill it out. Every census counts. It counts for your health care. It counts for the programs that we will be able to avoid provide to our community. So please make sure that you fill out the census. The information is there on your screen. And now we're going to end with a very, very special treat from our greenhouse. Our registered dietitian, Carrie Lakakis, will prepare a very special dessert, yummy, 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 using ingredients from the best greenhouse on the corner of Osborne Terrace and Lehigh Avenue. What do you have to share with us today, Carrie? I'm so excited. Hi, Atia. I'm so excited to share this delicious recipe with you. What we're gonna be making today is grilled peaches with a yogurt drizzle and a crunchy almond topping. And I can't wait for you to try this recipe, Atia. Um, it's gonna be really delicious and I hope everyone tries it at home. It's actually in our Healthy Together magazine. Um, we have a bunch of summer fresh recipes. It's still summertime. So I really want you to guys to check out the Healthy Together magazine where you can find this recipe, which is grilled peaches. Now, I wanna say that now more than ever, it's really important that we take care of ourselves. The foundation of a strong immune system is nutritious food, is the foods that we're eating. So we really wanna to try to make good choices every day eat lots of fresh fruits and vegetables. And as we mentioned, our farmer's market is every Thursday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we grow fresh greens at our farmer's market. So romaine lettuce, collards, kale, Swiss chard. We also partner with other local farmers so that we can provide Jersey fresh peaches and other summer and fall produce as it becomes available. Now these peaches are a nutrient packed uh, food. You're gonna, they're rich in vitamin C, which is great for your immune system and your skin, vitamin A, great for your eyes. There are other anti-inflammatory and antioxidants in our peaches. So not only is this dish delicious, but it's also nutritious for you as well. And it's very simple. It's actually gonna only take us 10 minutes from start to finish to get through this recipe. So there's a couple steps to our recipe, really just three main components to it. It's our grilled peaches, it is our yogurt drizzle and a crunchy almond topping. So the first thing I'm gonna do actually is start with the almonds. And you can use any nut that you like and if you have a nut allergy, then you can skip this step altogether. So I have on my saute pan, just a regular frying pan, and I'm just gonna put my chopped nuts, sliced nuts, chopped nuts onto that pan. Now what you're waiting for is for it to start smelling fragrant. As soon as you give it a little shake, as soon as you start to smell that strong, almond flavor, you want to quickly take it off. Believe me, if you leave it on too long, 
it's going to burn. So do not walk away from the stove with this one. It just takes a minute or two. And so once you start to smell the, those almonds toasting, it really is enhancing that flavor. You can quickly take them off and we're gonna set that off to the side. And that's gonna come on the end of that. The next step, I'm gonna get my grill pan. So these are grilled summer peaches. So I could use an outside grill or I could just use a grill pan and use it on my regular stove top. So with this grill pan, it's gonna be perfect to get those nice grill lines on my summer peaches. And let's talk about cutting our peaches. So when we take a nice ripe peach, we want it at the perfect ripeness. A little bit underripe is better than overripe. If it's overripe, you're gonna have a big juicy mess. So let's get this cranked up over here. And how are we gonna cut our peaches? We're actually going to cut them like you would an avocado. So we're gonna cut our peaches just like this. And we are going to we are going to twist it around. And when we open it just like this, we're gonna slice it. We can slice it into three pieces, each part of our peach. Pop that pit out, and we'll do the same thing for the other side. Get those peaches off to the side for just a second. And now we're gonna do our brown sugar and vanilla extract blade. It sounds more complicated than it is. It's just brown sugar and vanilla extract. So I've got my brown sugar in here, got my vanilla extract. It's just a tablespoon of brown sugar, guys. It's not too much. I'm not gonna add too much, but it's just gonna add enough sweetness um, to our peaches that are really going to enhance the flavor. Oh my goodness, it's, it's a really delicious, easy recipe for you to make. So once I have my brown sugar glaze, I take my peaches, let's just dip them in that glaze, get it on each side, my pan is nice and hot. So you can already hear it says all. Get my peaches on that pan. And now you wanna let the peaches go for a couple of minutes, about two minutes on the first side, one to two minutes on the other side. It doesn't take a lot of time. Wild one. Uh, I wish you could smell this. It smells like summertime. So this is a perfect healthy breakfast, a little fun to grill for breakfast. It would also be a great dessert for those nights spent out on the grill. I mean, there's nothing better than a summer Jersey peach, right? Except when you grill them. All right, get my last peach on there. Okay. So I'm gonna let that grill for a minute or two. And meanwhile, I'm gonna make the yogurt drizzle. The yogurt drizzle is plain, fat-free yogurt. If you wanna go low-fat yogurt, you can, but you definitely wanna choose plain. You saw me add a little bit of brown sugar in there and there's the sweetness from the peaches and that's more than enough sweetness that we need for this dessert. So plain yogurt, I love Greek yogurt. Plain Greek yogurt has a little bit of extra protein. It's really thick and creamy, but any plain yogurt will do just fine. So we've got a cup and a half of the yogurt right here, and I'm gonna add a tablespoon of honey to that. So got my honey, add a little, add a little uh, sweetener to it. And so actually when you are eating yogurt, if you get regular yogurt that's already sweetened, the sugar content is actually really high. But what's best is if you do add a little bit of sugar yourself, you can still make it tolerable because plain yogurt is very tart. By adding it yourself, you control the amount of sugar on it. So you make it just sweet enough, but you still keep it healthy. Some of those desserts, those yogurts out there are more like desserts than they are a healthy uh, meal or snack. So I've got my yogurt in there. And I'm just going to stir it up, and this is going to go on top of my peaches. Oh, they are caramelizing, and they smell amazing. I cannot wait. I cannot wait for Mattia and Marilyn to try this. I'm sure they're going to love it. And so we'll just set our yogurt off to the side, and I'm going to give our peaches just another minute. And while they are um, while they are still cooking over here, I want to remind you all where you can access this healthy, fresh food. So our farmer's market is every Thursday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. and it's right outside our hydroponic greenhouse. Um, we have socially distanced um, and, and safety measures for, to make, keep everybody safe as you come. But remember, it's really important for our health and well-being that we do continue to eat 
fresh, healthy, especially locally grown food. We can, you can actually order online. So we're gonna share those links with you so you can order online and do curbside pickup. And just pick up your box of produce, whatever you would like to order, and you can have that ready for pickup on Thursdays from every 11, every Thursday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Next really wonderful thing, Asset, now that everything has really gone virtual, we are offering a whole host of virtual wellness classes. Just like Lisa's class is gonna be every Friday held virtually here at Newark Beth that you can tune into. We also have cooking classes almost every day of the week. We have cooking classes for adults, for seniors, for little guys, as little as three years old, we have cooking classes for. It's so important we teach the little ones how to eat healthy. Um, and we have other wellness, um, overall health and well-being classes that we really want you to tune into. So you can check out these classes by going to rwjbh.org slash events, rwjbh.org slash events. So this is, uh, well, let's check these speeches out. Let's see if they are ready to turn. Let's see. Oh, they are looking wonderful. Oh, okay, perfect. So once you see that grill mark on there, Gary, they look it's great. A little sticky over here, but it smells absolutely wonderful. So once I get them turned over to the other side, oh, look at this one. I like it when it comes out perfectly. So turn those pizzas over and give them just another second. And then we're gonna then we're gonna get ready to plate our delicious dessert. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to me. I can't wait for our TA Maryland to try it. So we'll plate our peaches. It looks absolutely delicious. It smells wonderful in here. What an easy, healthy dessert for you to make. I'm sure the whole family will love it. I'm sure your friends will love it. Definitely want to try this one at home. And we have other healthy recipes, some are fresh recipes. Every uh, rendition of the Healthy Together recipe has some of our favorite recipes in there. Pan. All right, now we're just gonna add a little bit of our yogurt drizzle on top. Just get a little bit of that going around. Drizzling that all over. The yogurt is a great topping on there because it's packed with protein, packed with calcium, and it's gonna fill you up a little bit more. Then we have our crunchy almond topping, which is enhanced, we enhance in flavor by toasting it. Almonds are an excellent source of protein, healthy fats, and even a little bit of calcium. Oh my gosh, does that not look wonderful? So here we go, our grilled summer peaches with a creamy yogurt drizzle and a crunchy almond topping. Thank you so much for listening. I hope to see you at one of our virtual classes. Have a great and healthy rest of your day. Thank you so much, Carrie. This looks and smells so delicious and i'm so glad i had the opportunity to get some oh my goodness i couldn't I wait got, to taste it oh tia i got dressed up for my dessert okay i got oh, dressed I up with my, with my mask on and i got my dessert so i just wanted to get dressed up to have my dessert and it's oh, here i'm so excited thank you carrie thank you atia oh my oh. god oh my goodness it's mm. so very sweet it tastes absolutely great you really see good. all the grill marks on it. Carrie, this is the simplest and easiest thing to do. I'm so glad you were able to share this with us. Don't you just I, love it, Marilyn? Yeah, you get to try I'm going to go out and get a grill pan. I didn't know I could get one of those. Thank you, Carrie. I've learned so much. And this is easy and it tastes so delicious. Oh, uh, you have to know that you can get this recipe on our website, on our Be Healthy magazine. Oh, uh, mm. Uh, uh, uh. This is it's so really, good. Really I'm good. sorry that you guys can't try it right here, right now. <laughs> so it's good. It's simple and easy to do. Oh my goodness, it's so fresh and so tasty. Delicious. I guess we got to get back to the health fair now, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, excuse me, but mm, I'm so glad I got dressed up to go out to have my dessert. Thank you for this wonderful thing. I've learned so much. Easy to prepare. And you can find it in our Be Healthy magazine. You can also go on to our website. But we, as we close, we want to let you know that we are in an election year. And therefore, it is important for us to make sure that all of us are registered to vote. The information is on the screen. 
And we want to make sure that you, if you have not done so already, that you go there, register to vote for any of those sites, pull up your voter registration form, fill it out, for now is the time to do so. Please don't forget, vote. And so we want to let you know that any of the information that we have shared, you'll be able to find on our website, along with any of these links that we have shown for you today. So please, we want to thank you so much for joining with us during this time. We hope that our short time together was one that was informational and that you have been able to get a little bit of exercise. You've learned how to be able to take care of your children and yourself during this time that you've heard from our physicians. And so we thank you so much for joining with us. And we look forward to seeing you outside next year as we come together to celebrate and to be healthy together. So I don't know about you, but I'm going to make sure that I get seen by my doctor, that I get screened, and that I am healthy together. So we look forward to you to coming and seeing your doctor so that you too will be healthy during this season. I hope that you have a wonderful time with us today, and that you will have an absolutely wonderful weekend. Thank you so much. As I said, we'll be posting this information on our website. Do not forget that you can order your produce online. Thank you again for being with us. We look forward to seeing you next year. Not next year, on, on, on the, on, let's say as we come outside, but we really hope to see you before then as you get your wellness visits. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Have an absolutely wonderful day, a great weekend. So long.